Hey, brothers and sisters of Messiah Yeshua, just uh, coming on live here on a Friday afternoon. It's left at four o'clock. Um, I'm going to give it just a second because I kept cutting out on me, and maybe that's a sign that I'm not supposed to be uh, speaking right now, but um, until it gives out, I'll, I'll start. Okay, so question would be why I did a message yesterday when I was driving about the Sabbath. Why? You know, because that's what got put in my heart to share. Um, this, this afternoon again, or this morning, uh, I was driving, and again, it's another um, time where I was, you know, in the scriptures and then seeing like the Sabbath again, the Sabbath again. Why the Sabbath? Okay. So I believe this message would be something that um, if you're a believer in, in the Messiah, Yahushua, Jesus Christ, if you're a believer in him and you're like, I've told people about this, but maybe they'll hear this message. And maybe that's for someone who's on the fence. Now, I engage with people online because I believe that's somewhere where you can catch fish, right? You can meet people and find out and you can learn the same way, but you're going to end up in arguments that are not profitable and you shouldn't be doing that. But there are people who are going to hear it and, and investigate because there's so much people, there's so many people who are in confusion. They're lost in the church. They, they start to see the hypocrisy and they're like, what are we doing here? Well, that's who I believe I'm coming after. Um, you know, if you're a believer already and you're like, hey, this is good word, it's edifying, then great. You know, um, there's people who are going through wild stuff right now, uh, health stuff, mental, physical, all you name it. And so we have to remain humble and compassionate towards all people. But if somebody's learning something, fine, like let them learn it in their in their humility. The Sabbath day um, is controversial to people who are in Christianity because they're like, that's for the Jews or that's it was done away with or whatever they want to say like there's so many different views on it i can't go over all of them but i'm going to present to you what god showed me clearly today um that i think will connect the dots and maybe convince somebody that hey maybe that's what god's trying to show me um and all glory and praise and honor to him you know this has nothing to do with building up a ministry or a, a, or myself um i'm just a guy uh isaiah 222 says trust in god not in man all right so uh, I could totally tell you the truth today and, you know, tomorrow you're not testing what I say because you're like, I trust this guy. Well, that's a big mistake. You shouldn't just trust somebody because, oh, they told you something true, you know, a year ago or whatever, right? Okay. So now that I've established that, I'm going to go into Luke chapter four. Okay. Okay. Luke chapter four, Yeshua goes into the wilderness and he's tempted by the devil. He doesn't eat for 40 days and 40 nights. And he's tempted and he passes the test by using scripture and he had the spirit with him. So, you know, we need that. We're going to go into the wilderness if we're baptized like he was. And you're going to need the spirit and you're going to need the word. Okay, so then he says in verse 14, Yeshua returned to, in the power of the, of the spirit to the Galilee. And the news about him went throughout the surrounding region. So, again, they didn't have the internet, but word was traveling. He says this in verse 15, he taught in their synagogues. And everyone was praising him. They were like, man, this guy's in our synagogue. He's teaching stuff we've never heard before. Verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, okay, where he had been raised. So he was raised in this little town outside of the Galilee, little poor community. And it says, as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath and he got up to read. Okay, so he is a Jew in the land of Israel near the Sea of Galilee, in a little town. And after he's immersed, after he goes into the wilderness, he comes out and he goes where? Back to, the, to Nazareth, where he's from. And as his custom, he went to the synagogue and gathered with other believers on the Sabbath day, okay? Um, so he did it, right? And they say, well, that was before he died and resurrected. You gotta spiritualize stuff big time in order to come to these conclusions that the church has come to about the Sabbath. Um, but this is where I was, I was like, well, Okay, why don't, we, why don't we do what Jesus did? Why don't we go to the synagogues on the Sabbath? Okay, okay. Now, listen to this. This is where, the, where it gets really good, I believe. It says in verse 17 of Luke 4, when the scroll of Isaiah was handed to him, he unrolled the scroll and he found the place it was written, okay? He's reading in the synagogue, okay? He's reading in the synagogue. It says, the spirit of Yah, Yahuwah, the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor, he sent me to proclaim, to release the captives and recover the sight for the blind and set free the oppressed and to proclaim the year of Yahuwah's favor, God's favor. He closed the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, sat down, all eyes of the synagogue were focused on him. And then he began to tell them, 
today this scripture has been fulfilled in your ears. Okay, so Isaiah 60, 61. So I want to take you to Isaiah 61, right? Because that's what he read. Um, for no other reason than that's what he read. So Isaiah 66, it says this. Thus says, uh, not 66, 61. It says, the Ruach Elohim, the Ruach of Yehuah Elohim is on me because Yehu has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of Yehuah's favor and the day of God's vengeance to comfort all who mourn. Okay, this is the Messiah. He came to fulfill this, set the captives free, right? Give, give comfort to those who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them the beauty for ashes and oil of joy in the morning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that might be called oaks of righteousness and planting of Yah that he may be glorified. Okay, he continues, but this is the thing that I believe is missing about these verses. The same chapter, the same book of Isaiah, if you go back to chapter 58, I know this is a stretch, but this is what God was showing me. It says um, in verse 3 of Isaiah 58, Why have we fasted yet do not see? And why do we afflict our souls yet you take no notice? This is the answer from God. Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure, okay? And exploit all who labor, all of your laborers. Behold, you fast in strife and, and, and contention, and to strike with the wicked fist. You should not fast as you do today to make your voice heard on high. So those people are like, we're fasting and weeping and, and God hear us from here. He's like, you're, you're doing what you want, right? And your people are still working in the field. So that's not the kind of fast he wants, okay? Is this the fast I've chosen? A day to afflict your soul? It is, a, it is to bow down your head like a reed and searching out sackcloth and ashes? Like question mark, right? Will you call this fast a day, uh, a day acceptable to Yahuwah? Um, it is not a fast that I choose. So I know there's a lot of people who are like, we're wailing and fasting, lamenting. Well, that's fine. This is the fast that, that Yah chooses. Now, see the connection here between Isaiah 58, Isaiah 61, and Luke 4, if you will. And it'll get even better. Watch. It is not the fast that I choose to release, is not the fast that I choose to release the bonds of wickedness, untie the cords of the yoke, and let the oppressed go free, and to tear off every yoke. Everyone's like, oh, the yoke is the, 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 the law of God, and the Sabbath is a burden. Okay, stick with me. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? Do we share the word of God, which is our bread? We should. To bring the homeless poor into your house? Does anybody do that? Probably not. When you see naked, do you cover him? Do you hide yourself from your own flesh and blood? If people have needs, right? Are we helping them, you know, to the extent that we can? We should be. Hallelujah. We should be helping them. Okay. Um, like the, the Good Samaritan, right? Like he, he covered this man. He didn't know who he was. He took care of his bills, everything, right? He took him in. And that's the one that Yeshua gave as an example, like how we're supposed to treat people. Okay. Most of the time we pass by. Today, I was driving by and I saw a woman walking as the other side expressway. And she was walking. And she looked like she was carrying something. And I'm like, I started crying in my car, right? Because I'm like, I didn't stop. Like, so it's like, everyone's guilty, you guys. We're all guilty. Um, but, but listen to this connection. It says, then the light will break forth like the dawn in the morning, right? And your healing will spring up speedily. And your righteousness will go before you, the glory of Yahuwah at your rear guard. Then you will call and Yahuwah will answer you. You will cry and he will say, here I am, man. If you get rid of the yoke among you, finger pointing and bad mouthing, if you give yourselves to the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then your light will rise in the darkness and your gloom will be like midday. Then you will, yeah, the Lord will guide you continually, satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You will be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Some of you will, will rebuild the ancient ruins, who, who will rise up uh, the old age foundations and be called repairers of the breach, restorers of the breach, you guys. There's a breach between God and man. And yeah, Yeshua, Jesus, bridges the gap, okay? Without him, we have no connection. So he's the one that uh, lifts the bound, the cords, right? He's the one who uh, heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. 
He opens the prisoners, sets the prisoners free. Okay? That's who he's come for. Restorers of the streets for dwelling. Now, take a time out for a second. There's a lot of people who are messianic or whatever, right? They'll say, look at Isaiah 58. And they'll look at the last few verses, what I'm going to read. But they don't read the first, you know, uh, 12 or 13 verses, right? 12 verses. So I, want, I think you should do that. But listen to what he says. If you turn your foot from the, from the Sabbath, from doing your own pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, a holy day of Yah, honorable if you honor it, not going your own ways, not seeking your own pleasure, not speaking your own usual speech, right? Then you will delight yourself in Yah, and I will let you ride over the heights of the earth. I will feed you with my heritage of your father Jacob, for the mouth of Yah has spoken. Okay. So when people say Jesus came to set us free, right? This is true. To bro- the, the heal the brokenhearted, to bind up their wounds, right? The open the eyes of the blind, you know, open the ears of the deaf, right? This is what he came to do. But he didn't do away with something that in the same verses in Isaiah talk about this, that he's saying, hey, keep the Sabbath day holy because if you stop doing your own pleasure and you call this day a delight, then you'll have these promises, right? He'll feed you with the heritage of Jacob. You'll be a true Israelite to God. I thought that was pretty amazing, but I also see um, in Isaiah 56, two chapters earlier, okay, two chapters earlier, it says, thus says it, yeah, preserve justice, do righteousness, for my issue is about to come, my salvation, okay? And my righteousness is to be revealed. So again, this is about Yeshua, right? He's going to reveal the salvation of the world, right? Blessed is the one who does this, the son of man who takes hold of it, who keeps from profaning Sabbath, okay? Who keeps his hands from doing any evil. Do not let the son of a foreigner who has joined himself to Yahuwah, to Yah, say that Yah will surely exclude me from his people. So when you are a believer in the Christ, the salvation is about to come, you are now part of God's people, his people, called by his name, Okay? It says, nor let the eunuch say, behold, I'm a dry tree. For thus says Yah to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose what pleases me and hold fast to my covenant. It says, I will give to them in my house and within my walls a memorial and a name better than the sons and daughters. Um, I will give them an everlasting name and they will not be cut off. Also for the foreigners, you're a Gentile, right? Or you were, you join yourselves to Yah and minister to him, serving, right? Like Yeshua. To love his name, the name of Yah. You know, I come in my father's name and you will reject me, but another will come in his own name and you will receive him. That's John uh, 5.43. We have to love his name, his reputation, who he really is, not the false versions of him. It says to love his name and to be his servants, all who keep from profaning the Sabbath and hold fast to my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and let them rejoice in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Okay, it doesn't matter what your bloodline is, your background. You can have salvation in Messiah issue of Jesus Christ if you call upon his name. And it has to be in a place that you truly desire him, okay? Um, John 1 says, he was in the world, in verse 10, and the world was made through him. But the world did not know him. He came to his own, but his own did not receive him. But whoever did receive him, those trusting in his name, to these he gave the right to become children of God. They were not born of bloodline, nor human desire, nor man's will, but of God. Okay, You are reborn. You have to be born again to receive this. Um, What does this have to do with the Sabbath day? Well, God gave us Ten Commandments to Israel Okay, at Horeb and at Sinai. But Israel broke the Ten Commandments, okay? Israel uh, transgressed, they made a golden calf, and they started to worship the calf saying, praise the Lord, right? They thought they were worshiping God through the calf. It's crazy, right? Moses was gone, right? So they made a, an image of God so that they could worship him. Think about today, Yeshua, right? The Messiah, like Moses, right? He fasted like Moses, right? He went into the wilderness. He, he fulfilled the sacrifice that was required, you know, for us to have redemption through the blood of, of, of the Lamb. And then he went to go sit at the right hand of God, right? He sits at the right hand of God interceding for us. Like Moses was an intercessor. Well, people can't see him, taste him, or touch him, right? Physically. So he's not here. So what did the the people do? They cast off all restraint and they start making images of God and their their own images, right? And they start worshiping, saying, I'm worshiping Christ. I'm worshiping Jesus, right? 
but they don't um, obey the commandments of God. So it's the same thing. And so if you've been born again and you have a new heart and you have God's laws written on your heart and then the spirit of truth that guides you into this truth, this word, then you don't reject what the word of God says because of man's interpretation or religion. You receive it because the spirit of the living God is living within you, teaching you everything you need to know. And if you're not ready for that, he's not going to force you to. But if you are at a place where you're like, I'm done, I'm confused, then receive what God is giving you today in his truth from his word. That Yeshua didn't come to create a lawless church or a defiled bride, but a spotless one. And yes, you say, I still sin. You can repent. You're supposed to repent. Repentance? Repentance is, is like you've sinned, which is falling short of God's glory, which is breaking his commandments. Repentance means God forgives you and receives you back into right standing with him, right? Because you've washed your hands, you purified your heart, you're now back walking in the ways of truth and righteousness. So that's what it means. So do you continue transgressing his law because, you know, grace, grace, grace? It says, God forbid, Romans 6, 14 and 15. How can we who have died to sin still live in it? And I know people are like, well, am I sinning by not keeping the Sabbath day? It's, it says, remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Okay. Do you keep it holy, Mick? See, that's the thing. It doesn't matter if I'm keeping the Sabbath day holy. It matters if what God's word says. God's going to judge each one of us. His word will judge us according to what we've done. I can tell you all day. This is beautiful, right? His word is beautiful. I love his word. But does that make me special? No, because tomorrow I could be defiling a Sabbath day. Tomorrow's Saturday. I could be defiling it. God forbid, right? But... Does it make his truth not true anymore because I didn't do it right? No, it, it makes his truth the standard that you can rely upon, right? You can totally rely upon God's standard of righteousness, not man's version of it. So if you're in Christianity and you're like, yeah, I've always sort of wondered about the Sabbath day, don't wonder anymore. You know, look it up. It says in Isaiah 56, if you've joined God's people, then you won't profane the Sabbath day and you... Oh, look at these things. They do the little bubbles now. Um, you won't profane the Sabbath day and you'll keep his holy covenant. His holy covenant is the marriage contract between God and his people Israel. It's the Ten Commandments. I know it's like, we're not under the law. We're not under the law of Moses. That law of Moses isn't the Ten Commandments because God wrote them with his finger, put them inside the ark. And w what did God write on our hearts then? You know, it's uh, these teachings sometimes can get long, but I want you to understand something. I saw this connection Luke 4, Isaiah 61, Isaiah 58, Isaiah 56, and then there's one more, and then I'm out. Okay. Mark chapter 1. Okay, check this out. Uh, verse 14. Now John was put in jail. John the Immerser, Yochanan, John. Yeshua came into the Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. Now is the faithful, now is the faithful or the fullness of the time, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Turn away from your sins, repent, and believe in the good news. Like he came to share the good news, which is repentance, right? Repentance is good news. Um, it's not a dirty word. You know, repentance sounds like a mean thing, but it's actually a blessing that God allows for us in our humility, understanding who we are, to turn back to his ways and start following him. Verse 16 of Mark 1. Now listen to this. Passing along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Simon's brother Andrew casting net in the sea, for they were fishermen, okay? And Yeshua said to them, follow me and I will, you will become fishers of men. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. Going a little further, he saw Jacob, James, and son, the son of Zebedee and John, his brother, who were in the boat mending their nets. They were working, okay? They were working. They're, this is what they did for a living. They were fishing. Immediately, called them and left, they, immediately he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired hands and followed him. Now this, listen to this, verse 21. This is the part where I was like, oof, a brother shared with me this years ago. And they went into Capernaum. So they followed him, left their nets, and they went into Capernaum right away on the Sabbath. He entered the synagogue and began to teach, and they were astounded at his teachings, for he was teaching them as one having authority and not as the Torah scholars. Okay, so, okay, so. What did they do? They were working on the Sabbath day. Yeshua told them, follow me. He didn't judge them and say, how dare you guys working on the Sabbath? He wasn't like that. It was simple. He said, 
repent for the kingdom of God is near. You know, people knew what was going on. They knew that there was this, this man who might be the Messiah. He came to see them. There's four of them. All four of them left that day, followed him, and they went into the synagogue on the Sabbath. From disobedient to obedient because of Christ. Amazing, right? So he took him to the synagogue on the Sabbath. That was what I shared yesterday in terms of um, Acts chapter 15. Um, I messed it up. I, even, I posted it anyway because it's like I'm not worried about in my humanity getting things wrong. But God's word is pure. And so if you get the word out, then that's a seed that people need that God will use to help people come to know him through his son, Messiah Yeshua. Okay. Um, Acts chapter 15 it's the Jerusalem Council. Um, Gentiles were getting, were becoming born again. Amazing, right? Because the good news. God's power went out from Jerusalem. Uh, the um, apostles were going out. People were, were receiving the Holy Spirit. And they're like, there's this group of people who are like, you got to circumcise them. That's what that was about, you guys. Like the whole idea that people needed to have a circumcised um, penis to be, to be saved. That was the issue of the day, Okay. God showed Peter in Acts 10, don't call any person common or unclean because he's cleaning them. So he understood the message, right? Because he went to Cornelius. Cornelius was a God-fearing man who took care of the, the orphans and the widows. And um, he was told by God, call Peter. Peter need to learn a lesson. Cornelius need to receive the Holy Spirit. He and his family were saved, right? So Peter's telling this in front of everybody because they're like, what do we do? Right, because it wasn't an easy issue. Because obviously, circumcision is part of the Torah, right? It's it's still part of the Torah. And for people who go who are in these Christian churches, they're like, "Oh, that's for the Jews, and those are old covenant. That's the old covenant. That circumcision isn't the old covenant. You know, the old covenant. It says that it is an everlasting covenant, but it's the circumcision of the heart that is an everlasting covenant. Okay, that's in uh, Deuteronomy ten sixteen, I believe. But here's what they said. Uh, verse 19, therefore, I judge not to trouble those from among the Gentiles who are turning to God, but to write them to abstain from contamination of idols, from meat sacrificed idols, sexual immorality, fornication, from things strangled and from blood. Okay, those are from Leviticus, you guys. So that's in the Torah. But from Moses, verse 21, for Moses from ancient generations has in every city those who proclaim him since he is read in the synagogues every Sabbath. Okay, so the message is, Okay, the Gentiles are coming in. They need to get these things clean, cleansed first, right? They've been cleansed by the blood of the lamb. They got to get rid of their idols. They have to stop having sex with people that are not their wife, right? They have to um, stop uh, doing detestable things like the pagans do, strangle, and they got to not drink the blood, right? They got to stop eating the blood. Like that's the Noah covenant. But he says, look, they'll figure out, they'll get the rest of this because Moses is being preached in the synagogues every Sabbath day. So they're going to come in and learn knowledge and understanding. But the faith, right, from 1 Peter, I think there's 2 Peter, um, it's, it's in order, okay? Virtue is the number one thing that people have to learn in their faith, virtue. And that's what was going on here in Acts 15. Um, there's, there's a lot of verses that people say, um, Acts 20, verse 7, They'll say, oh, see that they broke bread on the first day of the week. That doesn't negate the Sabbath day. Plus, it doesn't even say that. If you look at the Greek words there, it says um, the sa it says Sabbath there. It does say it there. So you can look those words up in the Greek lexicon, um, Blue Letter Bible or something like that. You can look at that. But anyway, um, that's the message I was going to share with you, the connection between Yeshua, who was a Torah observant. Obviously, he had to be perfect. He couldn't break the law. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been the lamb. And that when he was breaking the yokes, of the people. It was their bondage to sin. It wasn't the law of God and it wasn't the Sabbath day because clearly in Isaiah 58 where it says that, you know, breaking the, the fast that God wants us to, to break the yokes. And then he talks about making the Sabbath a delight. How could those things both exist at the same time? So that's, that's why I believe I was supposed to share this with people because they might be on the fence to like, yeah, the, the, the law is, uh, what is, uh, it says profitable, only for the sinner, right? Well, if you're honest with yourself, everybody falls, sh falls short of the glory of God. So we all need repentance. But repentance isn't, I'm sorry, God, now I'm going to keep doing my own thing. It's, I'm sorry, God, with a contrite heart, please forgive me. And now I'm going to start walking in truth because God doesn't want us walking in lies. 
He wants us to walk in the truth. And the Messiah is the truth. His word is the truth. His Torah is the truth. His spirit is the truth. We have to desire the truth. Because otherwise, there's going to be this group of people who are going to tell you lies and you're not going to know the difference because you've yoked yourself to a group of people within a church that are going to follow this guy. Um, 2 Thessalonians 2, it says, for the mystery of law, uh, verse 7, for the mystery of lawlessness is already operating. Only there is one who holds back just now, but he is taken until he's taken out of the way. Then the lawless one will be revealed. The Lord Yusha Yeshua will slay him with the breath of his mouth and wipe him out with the appearance of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is connected to the activity of Satan with all power and signs of false wonders, with every kind of wicked deception towards those who are perishing. They perish because they did not accept the love of the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a strong delusion to, uh, to lead them to believe what is false. So God's doing it. You know, Satan is, Satan is at, you know, people give too much credit to Satan, okay? Most people are in sin because of their own desire, okay? You have your own flesh desire within you. Satan's not tempting you, right? God might be using Satan to harass you to get you to come back to repent, okay? We have the book of Job. We have other places where Satan is not, he has dominion in this, in this world, but like the people who are protected by God, they're going to be protected, but it's not going to be people who are outside of the covenant who are in. Remember, Israel was in Goshen during the, the Exodus, right? The plagues hit them, the first three, but the last seven did not hit them. So God's preparing a place for you. Yeshua is preparing a place for us so that we will not be affected by the plagues that are coming. Um, and it says, they'll believe what's, what's false so that they may be judged. All those who do not believe the truth, but delighted in wickedness. So delight in his word, you guys. Delight in his laws. His, his, his word is true is forever. Um, Yeshua even said, like, heaven and earth are going to pass away. My words will never pass away. The flowers um, fade and the grass will wither, but my word is forever. So he and his father are one. Trust in him. Trust in God. Trust in Messiah. And um, if you have any questions, you know, reach out. I'm happy to answer. I've been answering some questions because I figure out people have questions. Um, but I always tell you, test what I tell you, test what I tell you, and also tell other people to test it and look it into, look into it, study it with somebody. It's going to be, we're going to need each other, especially in the days that we live in because, you know, the lawlessness is increasing. People are getting uh, worried about politics, who's going to be in the White House. There's only one White House, guys. It's Yeshua and when he comes back and rules and reigns from the true White House, right? The the true temple of God. Like it's in us now, but he's going to come and we're going to have true righteousness. We're not, we're not going to have to worry about um, illegal immigrants invading. We're not going to have to worry about, um, you know, what our, how many guns and bullets we have. We're not, we're not going to have to worry about child predators anymore. Um, we're going to be with him face to face. We're going to know him. So my hope and prayer is that, uh, is that God's sanctifying me and preparing me for that meeting. Um, maybe that's selfish, but I want to be ready but I want my brothers and sisters to be ready too. It's a, it's a, it's a all out war right now. Um, so don't fall asleep, be ready in season, out of season, share the truth, love people. And um, who knows, um, maybe God will use you to set another captive free to the glory of his son, Yeshua, the Messiah. And I, uh, I pray you have a great Sabbath in Yeshua's name, amen.